Hey, this is Ain't Got A Clue. My name is Marcus Bronzy. And I'm Kay Curtis. This is a podcast where we take a question from a quiz and we answer it in a way that you can remember. And That's then it. you can go away full of knowledge. That's it. Super simple. One of us asks the other one a question. The other one just has to remember the answer. And you, you also have to remember. remember the answer by the end of the episode. What is the question for today, Kay? Today's question is, which language has the most words? Ain't got a clue. I uh, love a bit of language. English. I love English, mate. Is English? Apparently so. I mean, but I reckon this is biased. Written right? by an English man. Apparently. Huh? <laughs> written by an English man. Yeah, it's, it's got to be written by an Englishman. I mean, you know, America goes like, it's the Baseball World Series, but it's all just American. Oh, like, yeah, not yeah. all baseball. It's yeah. not just that, like NBA World NBA Champions. NBA World Champions. NFL and, uh, World Champions. NFL World Champions. Wrestling. Well, like, yeah, I mean, but to be fair, like, come on. Like, what? Wrestling, like. What are you, you going to say about what are you going to say about wrestling? British wrestling isn't really at that level, is it? We had the British Bulldog. Don't let's never forget the cl- the legends that we had. Oh yeah, <laughs> get out of here, man! <laughs> it wasn't as electrifying as the most electrifying man in entertainment. Do yeah. you smell what the Rock is cooking? He um, was electrifying. Yes. Turns out uh, the same thing in every film. Um, <laughs> Not much. I've never seen him cook. Yeah. What have we ever seen a rock cook? Um, have you seen his diet plan? I've seen those YouTube videos. Yes, I have. Where it's like today, today got hi guys, hi, welcome to my channel. And today I'm gonna try and eat like the rock, and I'm gonna try and exercise Bro. like the rock. Like for breakfast, I'm gonna have four kilograms of oats. Is it, isn't it amazing? And half a goat. Isn't it amazing when they do those? They never mention the steroids. Yeah, they never do. Yeah, so I'm like, that's that's where's that in the diet plan? For breakfast, plan? I'm injecting 14 yeah. grams of Diana Ball. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For lunch, I'm having some Clenbuterol to burn the fat. <laughs> and then later on, I'm having a little simple uh, testosterone yeah. booster yeah. again, just to make sure that I stay young and fresh. Yeah. And next year, I'm going to have a heart transplant because mine's fucked. <laughs> you get me? Well, who was it? Was it? I read. I think it was um, some banker or something that had had like six heart transplants in their life, and they were like a hundred. And seven. Six. They were just holding on for life, just getting new hearts put in there, bro. But if you're if you're a billionaire, why not in it? They were switching hearts. Some people don't have six cars in their life, Kay. Some people have like three or four cars throughout their life, maybe five. He had six hearts. Six hearts, bro. Six hearts. I've had more than six cars though. You have in my life. Easy switching leans, switching Wait, whips. Uh, at first I had a Ford Fiesta. That was my first car as well. Tell yeah. me about your foot. What was it? What colour was it? It was a burgundy. I had a red I had a red Emridge. Fuck N, I had an oh, N, oh, N, 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 N Reg. I had an N Reg. Ford Fiesta. Cost yeah. four hundred pounds, sold it for four fifty, but we had to change the gearbox halfway through anyway. Yes. Uh I had a, a Renault again, then I had another Renault again. I had a Renault Clio. I had a Vauxhall Astra. I had a VW Polo. And I had a Toyota Yaris, and I've got another Toyota Yaris. You went through a lot of cars, man. Yeah, doing man. that mileage. Do you, do you remember the feeling though when you first got in your car by yourself and drove? Yeah, I felt like I was. I felt I am king of the world now, bro. It was. I could get anywhere. It was a liberating experience. Let me put it like that. Anyway, mm. we're talking about language, yeah, guys. It, language. My, I, fr- my I felt like that. Five languages. Wow. My five. brother speaks five languages. How have you? You've. I feel like you must have asked him. Have you, have you asked him how that changes his perception of the spoken word? Like, cause let me tell you one thing. He can yeah? speak five. Fluently, by the way. Fluently yeah, in five. Yeah, fluent in five languages, yeah. Uh, let me tell you, yeah. I didn't realise my Netflix thought I was black until I saw his Netflix. Really? My Netflix thinks I'm a black man. Why right? is that? Because when I log on to my Netflix, it's like, hey, brother, you want to watch One on One? You want to watch Fresh Prince? You want to watch this film with <laughs> Denzel? Hey, man, we got Anthony Mackie in this. We got Anthony Mackie in that. We got Samuel L. Jackson. Motherfucker, watch Samuel L. Jackson. And then it like, literally just gives me like all these shows. And even on the thumbnails, it just puts a black actor on all of them. And I just thought that was like Netflix, innit? I was like, oh, Netflix are like promoting like the strong black lead kind of thing. Right. So you're watching a film where Mackie's got a line in it, but he's and going on the thumbnail. Mackie's on the thumbnail. Yeah. Algorithms, man. <laughs> and then I went on to my brother's and it was just like, Le Casa de la Papel. And then like all of a like, all these like Spanish dramas, Russian dramas, like Arabic, um, Arabic. I didn't even know there was Arabic things on Netflix, yeah? But my brother speaks Arabic, Russian, uh, Kurdish, English and Spanish. So he watches things in all these different languages. And I'm so looking jealous. at his one, bruv, and I'm like, What's this? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's just bring it. And I'm like, 
why am I just being told to watch like Sister Sister like <laughs> <laughs> and like last chance you <laughs> like, mail us at the palace <laughs> hey you want to watch a documentary about Vince Carter he was good for the Toronto Raptors wasn't he brother and it's just like yo like when, how do I get into that side of it but you have like unless you don't like go looking for it it's very yeah. hard the algorithm insane. just giving you one thing yeah that's the algorithm just serving you up the faces that you want to see to pull you into the film Netflix is deep you know and we never you never realise it you never realise how big de- Netflix is you know people are like I've completed it mate you've completed your Netflix yeah here. yeah yeah, yeah. you've like, completed someone else's it's like, Netflix it's like, it's like I mean and, and, and depending on your algorithm it gives you like different things so I'll be like you know I want to watch like for example Jason Statham yeah. and it's like did you mean like Denzel Washington <laughs> <laughs> guys you back uh uh-uh, come in come on we know you come yeah, on come on bro. come on come back over come I, I, I mean and it, it, it doesn't say like come on brother but doesn't in my head I feel yeah. like that's what it's trying to say it's to like, me it? like, you type in transport and it says did you mean equalizer come on <laughs> come on that's what you mean that's what it is isn't it Every time, <laughs> you ain't no man. You want you want yeah, equal. You, you type in Mighty Ducks. It says no Space Jam. Come on, <laughs> come on. We know you. Come on. We know what you like. You hockey, <laughs> <laughs> ice hockey. No, mm. that's a completely wrong climber yeah. for you. You type in Save the Last Dance. It goes no, the last dance. Come on, <laughs> come on. No man, brother. You wanted a documentary, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I took that personal. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. yeah, this. Uh, so the Oxford Dictionary alone. Has has more than 200,000 words in it um, and about 171,000 of these are still in use. Uh, but this is still disputed. Some argue that the words in Semitic languages like Arabic go into the millions. Because that's what, what, if I was going to be forced into a guess, I was going to put Arabic as the most words because I just felt like it has more words in it. Would well, you know it was something something you were saying about um, uh, you're about where the same word can mean something else. So like mm. there is a word in Arabic that depending on where you put the accent could mean heart or dog. How do you how do you go into it as a new learner of that language, how do you go into a conversation knowing you have to say the word heart without shitting yourself thinking if I fucking get this wrong, like like my heart bleeds for you, like my dog bleeds bleeds for you. Why is your dog bleeding? (laughs) (laughs) Or someone's like having a really emotional and that's why I'm feeling really down right now and you're like, yeah my dog bleeds for you. Oh fuck you then. (laughs) <laughs> friendship over <laughs> yeah 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 um, other languages uh, that have a lot of words apparently Korean and Arabic obviously um, but obviously I think we've met, we've touched on this before in like um, previous episodes that a lot of words in our language come from when we say our language we the mean language English. we are speaking right now <laughs> the yeah. language we are speaking right now um, Arabic uh, has a lot of English words or well, English has a lot of Arabic words so yeah. alcohol Algebra, uh, and we nicked Latin as well, right? That was yeah. it. Well, in, yeah, I think a, yeah. a lot of Arabic words went into Latin. Okay, right, right. But you see, al, al, alcohol. You know when Alco- they say yeah. al, al Jazeera? Yeah. If that was like fifty years ago, I mean, sorry, five thousand years ago, we might just be calling the news Al Jazeera. You oh. never know, in it. I don't know, but we call al- alcohol is from Arabic, algebra is from Arabic, abacus is from Arabic. Um. I don't know, maybe aluminium is as well. Who knows? Who knows? Why not? Any Al. Al. Alan. Alan is from Arabic. Al. <laughs> Arabic as well. Um, so it's... Um, but, you know, you've got German, Finnish. German and Finnish. Japanese. These are all like long, like big languages. I feel very intimidated by learning languages like Korean or Japanese. But I feel cl- I feel like I would e- more easily take on things like German. And I wish I learned Latin because I know people that have studied Latin if they don't know what a word means, they can just use the Latin in it to break it apart and understand it. They can be, oh, well, that says, duh, 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 duh. that must well, mean flower of the heart. Is, that is the, uh, etymology. Yes, etymologist. Etymology, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, well, let me get the actual like translation of it uh, for you lot. The actual definition. Etymology is the study of the history of words. Mm. I like that. So by extension, the etymology of a word means its origin and development throughout history. I love that. I love that. I, I, do you know what, yeah? What language do you wish, like, do you wish, what what did you learn in school? Uh, we did French. Do you wish you paid more attention? Yes. I wish so do you I still remember a lot of it? 
Mm-mm. I Don't remember, you remember your oral exam. I remember my oral exam, Kay, ended with the teacher looking at me. <laughs> I thought you were going to go into a bad joke there. And, uh, I remember uh, my hey. oral exam. It ended with a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mercy my, situation. My teacher was looking deep into my eyes. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's not talk about it. No, nah, it ended up with her looking at me and then just slowly shaking her head left to right with a level of disappointment. Just No way. And she went. <sighs> And because they used to use a tape recorder to record you in the oral exam, yeah. I remember that I knew that that got picked up on the tape recorder when she listened back to it or when it got oh, played back. I didn't do very well God. at all. Any all my other subjects, I, I, I really did well. We had two teachers in there on my one. Like you had two. There were two teachers, and they'd be looking at you like, "Hey, yeah, okay, come on." Really enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. yeah. So I, like, I still remember a lot of what I said. It was like, "Bonjour, j'habite à Stratham en Angleterre." Il y a en ville ni petit et ni grande. Il y a beaucoup de choses à faire. Il y a euh, <laughs> une boulangerie, une discothèque. <laughs> discothèque, I got that. Hi, I'm from Streatham in England. Piscine, yeah. And I like to go swimming and no, dance. No, I said, um, it's, what's I pissing? live in Streatham yeah. in a, what's it, in England. Yeah, that's it's what I said. A, it's, not, it's, it's not a big or a small town. I didn't get that bit. Uh, there's lots of things to do. Didn't get that. There's like a bakery or a, no boulangerie is a butcher. Didn't get that. I got the discotheque and pissing. Yeah, pissing is a swimming pool. Yeah, I got discotheque that. Discotheque's a thingy. This was when Caesar's nightclub was still there. R.I.P. Wow. Yeah. Caesar's nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you tell us, Kay? Go on. What uh, was Caesar's like when you? Ah, uh, well, I was too young to know you what it was like. It, but yeah, you can put on your machine. But apparently, jeans. it used to be like ten pound free bar. Like, what? Yeah, ten pound, ten pound, and it was an open bar, so people would come there. It was lots of like underage people going in there, coming out like head banging all over the place. Um, uh, so they were drunk <laughs> under the influence alcohol, which is a word that has Arabic. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> origin. There you go, full <laughs> circle. Do you know what we've been talking about words? Yeah. Uh, so I did a bit of research into some of the craziest words in English because <laughs> really like, there's a lot of mad words in it. Uh, like, in it is also. In it's an interesting word. When people word. say in it ain't a word, and I'm like, is though? It is, it is, isn't it though? <laughs> and is it? I want to go, ain't it a word? And it's like, nah, but it is though. It is though. It is a word. Uh, is it? It's, is a isn't word. it? Nah, but it ain't. Nah, <laughs> it? it ain't though, is it? <laughs> in it. <laughs> I, I like in it. I like Cockney. Do you know what I mean? Like with, mm. with English, people don't realize like it is hard to learn because you've got the accents as well. Like. Yeah. It's just mad. It's got nuances. Before we get into these words here, it's like the Canadian use of the word A. E? A. Like, um. Why I on? Fucking. Nah, it's like, how do they do so, uh, I got near problems, near <laughs> responsibilities. <laughs> this is new cross yeah. It's like. It's like, I'm not a mac em. I I I'm not a mac I'm not a mac I need our Canadian contingency I to clear hear mac I fucking hate mac <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sunderland's fucking hate anybody from Sunderland. They're all fucking mac <laughs> And then you've got the other, uh, what's it? Uh, anybody from Liverpool calls anybody from the surrounding area wolves. Uh, they had uh, a fucking wool. Oh, wool, 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 wool backs. Like people from Runcorn, woolly backs is what they call them. They, yeah. call, them, they call them wolves. Woolly backs, yeah, yeah that's what wolves. Wolves. Yeah, woolly backs. He's a wolf. My he mates, wears white socks. He's a wolf. My mates from Runcorn and they get called woolly backs by uh, Liverpudlians. Yeah, but which is shortened to wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Ain't it, it? Is. Uh, don't you mean woolly backs? <laughs> no, I mean wolves. So you've got Canadian and A. Man- You're right, our kids. Manchester. I like our kids. Manchester. Like kids. Hey, yo. Manchester. Yorkshire, like, hey up, lad. Hey up. I like that. Um, Bristol, more like. That's a confusing Somerset, one. West Country, Cider Drinkers, um, Birmingham, Arthur Shelby. <laughs> what the fuck? Arthur Shelby. <laughs> yeah. I always watch, um, what's it called? Peaky Blinders. I love that some Americans think that that's how we all talk. Like the Peaky wow, Blinders. You're like, like Peaky Blind- you speak exactly like that. You're no, a Peaky Blinder. Me and Kay were on a phone call just before the podcast, right? Talking about some boring computer stuff. And I was talking to my boy Jack, and then Kay was talking to Jack, and then Kay was saying something about him, and Jack was like, No, nah, Marcus, you can't. Kay was like, What? No, it's me talking. Marcus is me. Oh, oh you, you sorry, Paul, I thought you were sound the same. You southern as all sound the same to me, man. Southern accents. Southern accents. Oh, and then you got Scottish, innit? Yeah, yeah. And have, Irish. Yeah. The most charming of the accents I think we have. Customer service, Irish and Scottish people. Not Northern Irish, They though. do numbers. Nah, 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 Northern. Did you enjoy the service? <laughs> <laughs> what? Fuck you know. No, no, yeah. I, Sorry, we've recently moved to Belfast. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Ireland and Scotland, they get used a lot for uh, customer services. R- right, anyway, so, right, so what funky crazy words, words crazy words in English. In at number one, bum fuzzle. Number <laughs> any word with bum in it. Bum like fuzzle. Like your bum what fuzzle. do you think bum fuzzle means? All right, off the top and genuinely not looking at the script, I feel like bum fuzzle is hair is on your a bum hairy in it. bum in it. Yeah, yeah like yeah. the hair. The it don't hair. mean that, not, bro. Not, not just that. Not just like a little bit. If you've got a hairy bum, where like you've got the hair, hair on somebody's back, you yeah, know, yeah, just above yeah, their that, bum. Yeah, that that hair, that hair, like, yeah. Yeah. That's nasty. Where she got bum fuzzle? <laughs> My friend at uni is so hairy. Right, it's got so much bum fuzzle. His bum fuzzle genuinely could have been could have been um t- uh, plaited and one of my other uni and friends tried it, yeah one of my other uni friends shaved it for him because he's like, brother, I can't reach it. And he shaved it for him. Whenever you mention that story to my friend who shaved it, he has like a thousand yard stare and you can see the PTSD from Denies having it. to shave the back. No, no, he admits he's like, yeah, bruv, I don't really want to talk about it. Like looks at his shoes for about 10, 10 minutes, bro. He said the amount of sheer hair. It was like shearing well, a sheep. Well, bum fuzzle actually means to look confused, perplexed or flustered or to cause confusion. You've probably heard your grandma or grandpa use this phrase. No, okay. we haven't. Um, no. But yeah, so your friend probably does look a bit like bum fuzzled. Yeah. When you talk about the bum fuzzled. I feel like we enter each of these podcasts feeling quite bum fuzzled, and at the end of it, we're not bum fuzzled. We're not bum fuzzled at all. Uh, number two, Catty Wampus. Were well, you fucking what? Would you call me, mate? You fucking what's up? A Catty Wampus. A Catty Wampus. So this is a term that you'd find apparently for a in... smelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marcus Brown's there with the long blow. Oh, you know, Franzi, Franzi, the referee has to deduct some points here. This is absolutely ridiculous. He's been fighting dirty all game. And, mate, it's a catty wumpus, that. Freaking hell, it's a catty wumpus. Well, it actually, I mean, this is from, like, southern United States or the Midlands areas in there. Okay. It refers to something that's uh, in disarray. You know, that's not, it, it, like, for example, a post office might be catty wumpus. Oh, right, so I went to the shop. The library. I went to the clothing shop everywhere, and clothes were everywhere, nothing was right. It was so catty wumpus in there. Yeah, it's mad. It's a bit catty wumpus. Catty wumpus. That doesn't even sound right, bruv, coming from, like, an American accent. Catty wumpus. It's a bit of a oh, mouthful, so isn't catty it? catty wumpus, no. Gardy Lou is a Scottish term. But it sounds, it, it, but it sounds really nifty. Gardilly. Gardilly. It's definition of a funny, a funny and gross one. Uh, this is what people living in Edinburgh shout out their windows as a win- as a warning before dumping their slop buckets oh. out of their windows. At least they gave a little bit of warning to those below, so they're like Gardilly. So Lou, obviously we know means toilet, and yeah. Gardy might just mean something like watch out guard, or heads guard, up. Guard yourself. Gardilly. Can you imagine Gardilly. that though? You're walking down the street and you hear Gardilly. You, you just fucking wait. You look up, you're like, fuck, you got a dodge. Oh, yeah, Shit. that is mad. It's like being. It's what like, if you got your AirPods in and you're walking down the street and someone guardy loose? You don't hear it. Up. Ah! <laughs> it's good luck, like that. <laughs> <It's>, oh. <laughs> If a cat, if, was it? If a if a bird shits on you, it's good luck. If, if a, you get a guardy loo on your head, human shits on you. What's it's, that? It's a fucking assault. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a kink. It's That's a, what. That is. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's a kink that some men pay a lot of money for to fly you out and do. Really? Uh, What's the money like? <laughs> I mean, get yourself down to a certain... We'll, put a, we'll, put, a, we'll <laughs> put a tier on Patreon for that. There we go. It's like that yeah. one. The Guardi Lou tier. Tara Diddle. Uh, this is uh, someone that's filled with pretentious nonsense or something that is a lie. See, I would have said a Tara Diddle would have been a smelly dick. That's what I would have said. It is a right tar. Hey, tar it's a tar diddle. His hey, tar is his tar diddle. Hey, diddle. Hey, tar diddle. Hey, tar diddle. Hey, tar diddle. Hey, tar diddle. Usually, the fisherman is lying or at least exaggerating about a fish. Uh, if they say the cl- uh, um, what's it? If he's a bit tar diddle. Ah, uh, this one. I've Snickers. Just, I've just, before that, we get okay. I've just got into that. I've just got into fishing, right? And I noticed that fishermen, when they hold up their fish, they do all these tricks to make it look bigger. They hold it really close to the camera. And they stand back and it makes the fish look bigger. These just to make your fish look bigger. Or <laughs> yeah, they use, they use all the same <laughs> tricks. All the same tricks. They, they hold, they stand, they put the camera on the floor and hold the fish really close to the camera and all that stuff. Uh, you know, they sometimes just take off their trousers. Yeah. And, uh, anyway. But yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a big deal when people talk about fish, man. Like, like to catch a big fish, yeah, like if you're a fisherman. You just fish it back, I mean, throw it back into the... For koi carp, you throw it back. But for some lakes, if you catch stuff like trout, you can knock it on the head, take it home, gut it and eat it yourself, which I say is the best way to enjoy fish wow and also the best way to enjoy fish is by not being in the EU and being in control of our own fish <laughs> I'm joking that is what they told us um, yeah, apparently apparently yeah. uh, snickersnee oh right so a snickersnee can I have another guess at this yeah now? of course a snickersnee is what happens when you leave a snickers in your pocket 
walk around, forget about it. You open it up and you realise it's melted. And it's gone all over your knee. Any, yeah. It's, oh, yeah, he's yeah. got a Snickers knee. He's got a Snickers knee again. Oh, okay. oh mate. It, I mean, it sounds quite cute, innit? Like, Snickers knee. Snickers knee. Snickers knee. But it actually refers to a long, dangerous knife. Oh, wow. Yo, okay. what? So, man got Snickers knee when I was on ends. <laughs> Snickers knee. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We have to make a George song for this. You melt like Snickers when I pull out the big, big, big Snickers snee. Yeah, you can't test me. I'm a real G. Man, pull out the Snickers snee. Everyone go flying. Everyone go run. <laughs> Everyone's mouth opens like Ryland, like raw. How big is this man's Snickers knee? <laughs> <laughs> it was first used in reference to cut and thrust fighting in the 1700s and still occasionally used uh, when referencing a knife. Cut and thrust fighting. I yeah, feel like I that's I fighting I with a knife. But and that's Snickers not knee, the kind of if fighting you hear that I want to watch. Songs, me and Marcus brought it back, bruv. Snickers. Be wet like your girlfriend's Snickers. Hey. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, Widdershins. Widdershins. Hmm. Yeah, it's a boring... Is it? It's a boring one. It's just another way to say something's moving counterclockwise. Uh, could you all swim, Widdershins? Widdershins? I've, I've, I've got my shins on me. Widdershins. <laughs> Without my shins? No, I'm always with my shins. Widdershins. Widdershins. Collie wobbles. Refer Easy to now. Wid- no need to get racist, bruv. Come on. <laughs> Come on, okay? Get cancelled if you're not careful. She, collie wobbles. Okay, right. This refers to the feeling in your stomach or an overall belly ache. Oh, I've got collie wobbles. I like that. I've got collie wobbles. That, 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 sits, that, that sits well with me. I've had, that, makes, that, that feels right, doesn't it? Like, I've got a bit of collie wobbles. Do you know where it comes from? Ain't got a clue. It comes from the Latin phrase, cholera morbus. Meaning it came from the disease that we all know as cholera. Ooh. It's a word that many people still use. Especially older individuals. They weren't as old as me, though, because I, I was around during the time of the Roman Empire. So my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. I was a murdered son, son to a murdered wife, and true emperor, known as servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Um, and I also have collie wobbles. <laughs> I did have collie wobbles back in the afterlife. I didn't realize that would, that years of fighting in the Colosseum caused me to have collie wobbles here, there, and everywhere. That sits well with me. That phrase sits well with me. I I like that. Of all the ones you told me, that was really lactose. Yes, it gives you collie gives wobbles. me the collie wobbles. Oui. I can't, I'm going to remember that one. Thanks for that, Kay. Gubbins. Um, hmm. I've heard that before. I feel a little bit. It might do because you're in the tech world. So this is an object that has little or no value and is also referring to a gadget or a device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gubbins. gubbins. Uh, abibliophobia. So one more time, please. <laughs> A, bibli- a bibliophobia. Um, can you put that in a sentence for me? <laughs> How do I spell that? Uh, this yeah. basically refers to someone who's afraid of running out of things to read. Ooh. Basically, we don't know anyone like this because nobody reads anymore. I'm a bit like that. We do read, but a lot of people don't I'm read. I'm a bit like that with books a bit, but I'm not the most prolific reader. But I, I don't I don't like, I would hate to have no books. Like I need to at least have a couple ready to go and podcasts. I need to have a couple just you locked and loaded. You might be podcasts, so you might downloaded. be a, a, a podophobia. A, pod-li-bli- a, p- a podophobia. A podophobia. No, a podophobia. A biblio. Because if you take that word, we're going into real deep etymology terms now. Biblio. Biblio yeah. is like, so Book. if you if you look at even French, yeah, mm. bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. It's a library, right? So, and, and when you when you, when you were at uni and you did an assignment and you had a bibliography, mm-hmm. it was what? It was my selection of books that I'd read. Come on, so a bibliophobia, scared of the books and thing running out. You get me? So for a podcast, you've got to go a podophobia. I want a poblibli in it though. No, I like the bibli brother, bit. brother, I it's a not podophobia. Hey, this is a funny one. Bomba shoot! Oh, come on, we all know bomba shoot, isn't it? Yeah, bomba shoot. <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually refers to an umbrella. Really? You can come under my bomber shoot, 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 yeah, hey, I feel hey, like I've had a bomb. Under my bomber shoot, shoot, <laughs> shoot, shoot, yeah, yeah. Many times we shine together, many times and forever. And we come under my bomber shoot. You can come under my bomber shoot. I've had some bomber shoots before, but it's mainly after a lactose consumption like after a bit of pizza or some cheese at Christmas I have had the bomba shoots the bomba shoots the bomba shoots the bomba shoots favourite so, uh, so far is collie wobbles by the way let's see if we can better this lollygag 
<laughs> so like niche, hey brother hey so like, man so we niche, can't be hey niche a party gag. <laughs> a niche part of the internet there <laughs> what are you into oh, I like a bit of lollygagging lollygagging do you do lollygagging how much is that love um so wow where did we go this isn't um um, whoa, okay, sorry to take that out. Uh, lollygag. This is someone who's messing around and wasting time. Stop, stop lollywagging or lollygagging. All right, that makes sense. A lollygag. Yeah. Flibber to, <laughs> flibber to get to give it. Flibber to gib it. I don't know what the hell this is. Flibber to gibbet. That is the sort of thing that an old person would say, get out of here with your flibber to gibbet ourself, man. You're square. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's someone who's, who's silly and who talks incessantly. That's it. Yeah, flibber to gibbet. Malarkey! Malarkey. We all know that one. Yes. First, for instance, he'll talk a particular foolishness or a lot of these things in it. Pandaculation. Oh. This is what happens when you wake up in the morning and stretch. As you stretch, the muscles go tight and rigid for a short time. You know that bit where like you go... Oh, so it's, it's not the... Uh, it's the... And the shake, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that bit. That's pandaculation. It's not like starting a pandemic. Uh, Siliquent. Pandaculations. Siliquent. Celebrations. Sorry. Siliquent. Pandaculation. Inadination. For more gesticulation, join the pandaculation. Siliquent. Um, do you remember being an eager high school student or a college student who sat in the front row? Do you remember how much the professor spit while talking? Well, this is what that action is called. That's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Do you, do you, if you do you remember the teacher <laughs> spitting at you? <laughs> I mean, you can get done for that. These days. What the fuck is that about? Wabbit. A wabbit. That's how people that have a speech impediment say rabbit. Why no, is that this is not referring to a wascally rabbit. Okay, it's a this? Scottish term for being exhausted. I'm wabbit. I'm wabbit. <laughs> Next time you say them, pretty wabbit at the moment. Can pretty I, wabbit. I'm going to call my Scottish friend and say, I'm a bit wabbit, mate. How you doing? Imagine what he said. He'd be like, what? Shut up, you shagar. <laughs> <laughs> you flippity gibbet. You shagger. Snolly Gosta. Snolly Gosta. There's already so many. This is something that people call politicians. It's not a nice answer, but it's uh, for a politician who does or says things for their own personal advancement. That's all of them. <laughs> all exactly. of them. All politicians. Snolly Gosta. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Uh, order. Order. Oh. Order. Yes, carry on. Mr. Speaker, I put it to uh, the House that the right honourable gentleman uh, that stands before me uh, on the opposite side of the House is a snolly gosser. Through through numerous uh, uh, instances in the past year, we have seen him do actions for his own advancement and not for something, and, and, and not being someone that uh, uh, follows their own principles. He is a true snollygoster. Well, I just want to say to your honourable gentleman that I feel that what he's been talking has been a lot of flibbity gibbet. <laughs> Um, uh, I would say as well, um, he is the type of man who, when he speaks, we we might as well shout out, Gadi Lu! I said man's talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> in a in a proper old English way, man's talking Gardy Lou. So, okay, I just want to say before we wrap this episode, I've had a great time. I feel like this episode has not been a lot of gubbins. At the start of it, I had some collie wobbles, but they've kind of settled themselves throughout it. Uh, I just feel like you know um, uh, I'm going to need a bumper shoot after today's episode because I heard that it's raining a little bit outside. And bomb, the bumper <laughs> shoot, and. Um, yeah, I'm Wabbit. I'm Wabbit, mate. So, I'm Wabbit. Yeah, I'm absolutely can, can, Wabbit Can you well. hit me with the uh, I'm question, absolutely please? Wabbit. I'm, I'm wabbit. absolutely Wabbit. Which, which language has the most words? English. Apparently. Apparently, yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. But, um, well, they make up a lot of words as well, innit? Yeah, pushing P, bruv. Pushing P out here. And on that one, we're pushing P as well. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every time you listen to one of these episodes on the free feed, it, uh, you, we also put a duplicate sounding episode. Well, not duplicate sounding, a whole new episode on Patreon for free. And we also give you everything that we release on our free feed for and free, free and early. So if you want to get episodes early, if you want to get bonus episodes that are just as juicy as this, head over to our Patreon. 
All right. In fact, they're so juicy, we don't even know which ones are our patron yet at the ones at the moment. So this could be a patron right now that you're listening to. Back so if you're already listening on Patreon, go tell a friend how sick we are and come and join us. And we'll also be adding other stuff like we've had some Ask Me Anythings on there and some other bits as well moving forward. It's just kind of a place for our community to grow. Other people that are fans of the show and what me and Kay are up to can get in there and we'll look after you in the future with regards to live shows. And that's at patreon.com forward slash ain't got a clue. Where can they find us on socials though, Kay? Kay Kurt, K-A-E. Kate Wardy and Marcus Bronzy, Bronzy M A R C U S B R O N Z Y. I got that right. That's right. Okay, we'll be in your ear hole soon. Stay blessed. Don't forget, this show is written by K Curd and Marcus Bronzy and it's edited by Marcus Bronzy and Matt Farthing with the sound design. Until next time, stay blessed. Stay blessed.